And my favorite part about Thanksgiving is that I can eat as much as I want. Nobody criticizes me. <laughs> gravy. I love gravy. On everything. <laughs> my Aunt Zoe used to make this really awful green gelatin mold. It's like celery with all these little chopped up frozen mixed vegetables in it, you know? Floated in it. Like succotash. <laughs> it was a tribute to the pilgrims. None of us remember how it got started, but we all hated it. But none of us ever had the heart to tell her. So every year, Doreen and I would feed it to the dog under the table. That worked until Max threw up on my mother's Persian rug. My father loved Thanksgiving. Each year before he'd carve the turkey, he'd look around the table and he'd ask each of us what we were grateful for. <laughs> My mother'd always say something about her health or her lovely children or her handsome husband. One year, Doreen was grateful for having developed breasts. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Me, I always said something stupid, you know, like, I was glad that I had a wonderful family and that I lived in a beautiful house and that I had enough food on the table. I figured you couldn't get in trouble for that, right? And this year? Um, this year I'm going to my mother's and, and Tootie's gonna cook. No, I mean, what are you thankful for this year? I'm glad it's not last year. Living in time And feeling every moment Do I walk into tomorrow Ketchup is a vegetable. Well, Ronald Reagan is not the president anymore. Ketchup goes in the condiment box. You know, there's a plan here, people. If we don't stick with the plan, we will not be able to officially pack Thanksgiving baskets. Mmm, let's see. Pate, escargot, uh, Carol. Would uh, chocolate-covered hazelnuts be considered a fruit and vegetable or a condiment? Do you mind? You know, Udell, there are 150,000 homeless people in L.A. County. Hungry people. People who are looking for something a little more substantial than escargot in their Thanksgiving basket. Well, how do you know? Just because they're indigent doesn't mean their diet has to be limited to, mmm, chunky beef stew. <laughs> Yeah, maybe not, but I sure as hell don't want to be there when some starving guy opens up a can of snails for his holiday dinner. <laughs> Perhaps that starving guy would like to feel for one day that he is worthy of a little luxury. Or does that offend your sense of propriety, Hank? Rosie? Rosie, I want to talk to you. I've got a bail hearing in 10 minutes. That's what I want to talk to you about, Rosie. Do you know who you're representing? Yes, yeah, some old guy named Fish Fry Baby. Some old guy? One of the most important men in American music. This man is a national treasure, Rosie. Well, he said he was a singer, but I... Carol, we'll be back in an hour. Mm -hmm. 
why do we need two PDs for a bail hearing? What two PDs? One PD and one fan. What's he charged with? Kidnapping with intent to extort. Oh, boy. I need to get in. Mm -hmm. Fish fry, baby. Thanks. Fish fry, baby. That's my name. Newport Folk Festival, 1959. One of my best. I showed up in Newport with nothing but a hole in my pocket. Played the blues all day and all night. Harry and I skipped out during finals week and hitched to Newport. I'll never forget it. The music, your music. This man is a genius. Ben Meyer. What happened, Fry? No more Woody, no more Lead Belly. What happened to all those songs about breaking down walls and bringing people together? Ah, uh, you just wait, my man. Somebody gonna sing them again. This takes time. I know, but for right. 31 years. Look, guys, I hate to break up old home. We've, we've got a bail hearing. I know, I know. So, Fry, what's all this stuff about kidnapping with intent to extort? They had the legal mumble jumble they come up with to try and slip a rope around my black neck. What happened, Fry? Ah, uh, scroungy head boy showed up three days running last year out at Venice Beach listening to me sing my songs. Last July, I'm down the pawn shop reclaiming my gold tooth, and they're on TV on that MTV show. It's that same boy, all done up in black leather, more makeup on and a hooker on Halloween, singing my exact song. So uh, he ain't give me no name, credit, money. So I go down to the studio, give him a chance to do the right thing. He just cussed me out of something simple. So what'd you do? What anybody would have done. I grabbed the gun, took him to my car, told him when I get a million dollars, he can go home. That's it? That's it. That's kidnapping with intent to extort. Thanks. OK, Rosie, I want him out on his own recognizance. Oh, R, how am I supposed to do Look, that? Look, a two-bit punk with big money and big lawyers robbed this man of the only thing he can call his own, his music. And now they're going to put him in jail and take away his dignity, too. So what's he going to have left? One hell of a fan. The Honorable Spencer Martin presiding, please rise. Be seated. Case number BA60735, State of California versus Fish Fry Baby. Who? Oh. Fish Fry Baby. Well, counsel for the defense, please approach the bench. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. O'Neill, what the hell is going on? What is this fish fry baby? That's his name. What name were you given at birth? Uh, Luther Little, Your Honor. Well, you just got it back. Thank you, Ms. O'Neill. Yes, sir. Mr. Watts? The purpose of this hearing is to determine appropriate bail for the defendant. I'm all ears, Mr. Watts. Your Honor. Taking into consideration the severity of the crime, armed kidnapping with the intent to extort $1 million, the people recommend bail be raised to $100,000. Ms. O'Neill. Your Honor, my client has no police record. This no... man held the victim captive at gunpoint for hours. Now, how can we let him back on the streets? He's a threat to society. Your Honor, would the court please direct Mr. Watts to allow me to complete my remarks? Counselor, 
Miss O'Neill didn't interrupt you. Please extend the same courtesy to her. Mr. Watts's allegations totally distort what in fact did take place that day, Your Honor. Mr. Little did not enter the studio armed or with the intent to kidnap King Death. My client caused harm to no one. No, certainly does he pose any threat to society whatsoever. He is a 68-year-old man with high blood pressure and poor eyesight. His alleged crime was a crime of duress perpetrated against a man who robbed him of his only livelihood. Therefore, I beseech this court to release my client on his own recognizance. Your Honor, the people can't accept that. Mr. Little. Yes, sir, Your Honor. You aware of the severity of the allegations involved here? Yes, sir. You won't try to kidnap that fellow again, will you? No, no, sir, Your Honor. If you are released, do you have a place to go? Same place I lived before. Which was? 225 on Santa Fe. Very well. Defendant is released on his own recognizance. Thank you, Your Honor. Come on, fine. Let's get out of here. I haven't heard a radio sound this good since Magic Sam drove me to Baton Rouge back in 61. What name did you go by then? Fish Fry Baby. Since I was three years old, I'd be playing my harmonica every Saturday night at the Fish Fries. Little girl, I was one Fish Fry Baby. Fry, I'll make you a deal. I don't call you boy. You don't call me little girl. How old are you anyway? I'm old enough. Fry, there is no 225 Santa Fe. Sure it is. Just make a U-turn under the bridge. That's it, right over there. A car? A 1963 Electra 225 V8. A friend of mine lets me sleep in it till he sells it. Got myself a hot plate and a skillet. Plugs into the lighter. You live in the car? It's a temporary thing. Till I get my money from that kid. Fry, you know, there's some hotels that, that give out vouchers. I mean, maybe we can get you into one tonight. Ooh, that sounds inviting. Those nice clean sheets. If I don't cook for these folks, how are they going to eat? Are you sure? Don't you worry about me, Rosie. I lived in lots worse places than this. I'll be fine. OK. I'll see you later. All right, you take care of yourself now, yeah? Trouble in mind, I'm blue, but I won't be blue always, for the sun will shine in my back door someday. along this afternoon. 
Hey, no problem. Listen, if the baby hadn't started screeching, well, the maitre d' might never have let us sit in the private dining room. Sometimes I don't even hear her crying anymore. It's like white noise. Do you think that's weird? Doreen, I'm here in this dump on my lunch break, trying to buy records by people named Sunhouse, Pine Top Perkins, and T-Bone Walker, in the belief that by listening to this music, it will better help me defend my client, whose name is Fish Fry Baby. I don't know what's weird anymore. I'll tell you what's weird. Todd's mother refuses to serve turkey at Thanksgiving. What does she serve? Ham. Ham at Christmas, ham at Easter, ham on the 4th of July. The woman must have some kind of deficiency. What's wrong with ham? Thanksgiving doesn't seem authentic without turkey. So, make your own turkey. Oh, no. No one brings anything to Muffy Morrison's Thanksgiving table. <laughs> She insists on doing it all herself, right down to the gourds and the pilgrim candles. So let her. What choice do I have? Rosie. No. Come on! No, Doreen. I'm not spending my one day off watching Muppy and Buzz throw back their eyeballs and yell at each other all afternoon. That only happened once. Once was enough. No. I watched the parades with Mother. And then we can gorge on Tootie's apple pie. That's about all I can handle this Thanksgiving anyway. Well, it's an open invitation. I know the holidays are rough. Would you stop worrying about me? As far as I'm concerned, Thanksgiving is just another day. I gotta get back to work. Well, well, well. I feel so underdressed and overweight. How do they get so skinny? I don't know, but chances are it's illegal. I'm looking for King Death. Yeah, you and everybody else. He's busy. Look, we're here on official business with the County of Los Angeles. Studio B. Talk to his bodyguard. Name's Mongoose. Mongoose. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tally line two. You the mongoose? Well, Barbara Bush, the early years. I'm from the public defender's office. I'm representing Mr. Fish Fry Baby. I wonder if I might talk with Mr. Depp about a skirmish with Fry. KD's right in the middle of a session. He can't talk to anyone. Come on, pal. Just take a minute. like he's got a minute. OK, uh, so why don't we just talk to you? Could you tell us what happened that day? Yeah, what the hell? Well, we're in the studio, and Katie's laying down a vocal track like now. Who else was here? Rex, the engineer, Vicky, his old lady, and me. Anyway, this, this old black dude comes running in, huffing and puffing about Katie ripping off some song. And he's demanding a million bucks. And then? Well, and then he gives me the signal. What signal? The one to make him disappear. It's my job. I'm the bodyguard. It's what I do. So I pulled my piece. Your gun? Very good. To escort Mr. Bojangles back to whatever dumpster he came out of. But he must have seen it coming, because he jerks out my chair, and I hit the ground. He starts tap dancing on my family jewels, until I drop the gun. Then he picks it up, and he points it at KD, and he marches him right out of here. That's what happened. Are you willing to testify to that under oath in an open court? Open court, closed court, any place you got. That old fossil got me in a lot of trouble. And as far as I'm concerned, you can lock him up and throw away the key.
crazy about dirty rivers. I think you mean Muddy Waters. Well, what's the difference? Muddy Waters, Hound Dog, Taylor, Howlin' Wolf. Any of these people have normal names? Yeah, the name puts the curls and the toes of the girl. Otis Pan told me that at the Dunbar Hotel. When I was a kid, I heard all the greats there. Muddy Waters. What a voice. What a performer. Big Mama Thornton. Willie Mae Thornton's the best. You know him, Rosie? Yeah, yeah, they were in the D.A.R. together. Do you mind? Some of us are trying to work. You know, that boy's mama must have been sucking lemons the whole time she carried him. Come on, he's a virgin. Give him time. Rosie, does this inspire you? Yeah. So go home and put on Barry Mantelow. Okay, guys, the party's over. I feel very bad. I just can't even appreciate his music. Well, nobody can appreciate music in a cold office. Rosie, do yourself a favor. Take these records home. Okay. I don't see how it's gonna help Fry. You sure I can't help you in there? I'm okay, mother. What? Wait, you turn this music off. I can't hear a word you're saying. What? I brought Tootie's apple pie. It's in the fridge. I knew you'd miss not having it at Thanksgiving. What do you mean? Are we doing Thanksgiving? No. I told you two months ago, Ella and I are going on a cruise to Puerto Vallarta. Will you please turn that thing off? Well, I know you said you were thinking about it, but you didn't actually say you were going to do it. Well, you could always come with us. I hate Mexico, Mother. Besides, I can't afford to get sick right now. Oh, come on. All you have to do is take those little pills. You'll be fine. Thanksgiving in Mexico? It's like Easter in Vegas. What happened to family Thanksgivings? I'm sorry, darling. Now that you and Patrick are divorced. Right. I mean, you don't have the big house anymore. I just, I didn't think you'd want to host another Thanksgiving. Nobody asked me. Anyway, I kind of thought that you'd want to spend Thanksgiving with someone. You always loved Thanksgiving. Me? No. Your father loved Thanksgiving. That's why we always had to have 60 guests and three 20-pound turkeys and five gallons of candy yams. No. Oh. Besides, after last year, I don't think I could stand another family Thanksgiving. I don't remember any problem about last year. Fiona, you and Patrick had just separated. Spent the whole day in bed watching the I Love Lucy marathon. That little David got sick. Doreen and Todd had to leave before we even carved the turkey. Oh, sweetheart. Everyone's grown now. Has their own life. It's no use trying to recreate the past. I wasn't trying to create the past. All I wanted was a, a little togetherness. Next year. What's that? The frozen pizza's ready. I hope you didn't go to any trouble.
Picture day. Oh, two D's. You don't like having your picture taken? No way. I mean, what if 20 years from now when my class reunion rolls around, I'm really fat? Well, everybody's gonna look at my picture on the yearbook and say, whoa, Kimmer, did you blimp out? But, but, if there are no pictures of me like this, then they'll never know how much weight I put on. Okay, I won't narc on you this time. I used to hate class picture day, too. <laughs> so you... Gonna be seeing your dad over the holidays? Yeah, he and Bridget are taking me skiing in Aspen. Oh, well, that should be nice. Nah, you should see Bridget in her ski suit. Make you sick. I'm sure it would. You have fun with your dad, huh? You know, at least to get away from my mom and a bag one. I think they're fasting for Thanksgiving. Big Joe Turner. Big Bill Brunsey. Big Walter Horton. They're blues singers. Big ones. <laughs> I thought it would help me. It's a long story. So you want to ride back to your mother's? No, she's got her book review club over for breakfast. Why don't you sit in? Maybe you'd learn something. I'd really rather wait and see the miniseries. Suit yourself. I'm late for court. Okay? Kiss me goodbye. Oh, no. Hey, you're representing that old psycho who kidnapped King Death, aren't you? Well, I wouldn't call him a psycho. King Death is in the studio making an artistic statement. And this guy busts in, yanks him at a gunpoint. No, no, what would you call it? A victory in the war on noise pollution. I'll see you. See you. Lock up when you leave. Okay. <laughs> call your first witness. <laughs> will please come to order. order. One more outburst and I will clear this courtroom. State your full name. King Death. Not another one. State your real name. That is my real name. Had it legally changed that years ago. What you got there? Driver's license, six credit cards. What name appears on the identification? King Death, Your Honor. On all of it. All right. Proceed. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth in the cause now pending before this court so help you God? I don't believe in God. Can I swear on Satan? You affirm that you will tell the truth, Mr. <clears throat> Death. All right, then. I affirm. Mr. Death, please, tell this court about your traumatic experience at the hands of Luther Little. Before you accuse me, take a look at yourself. the song the worm and the apple performed by the defendant luther little prior to your recording it for your record album flesh fever objection your honor this is a kidnapping trial copyright infringement if it did occur is not at issue here sustained your honor if i'm keep going Ms. o'neill how would you describe the way mr little treated you while you were being held prisoner in his car not bad isn't it true that he cooked for you? Yes. He had one of those frying pans you plug into your cigarette lighter. He made me chicken. That's right, John. That's how he got away. I had to run a 7-Eleven for more pepper. <laughs> no further questions, John. Will it be the gas chamber? Will it be the hangman's rope? Will it be the electric chair? Or is there still some?
some hope. And at that point, Mr. Little, did you seize a 38 caliber handgun from Lothar Bozelski, alias the Mongoose, and hold said gun to Mr. Death's head? Yes, sir. Did you then escort King Death against his will from the studio into your car and demand one million dollars? I had no choice. He stole my song. Just answer the question, Mr. Little. That is my answer. But in actuality, Mr. Little, you did have a choice, did you not? Couldn't you retain counsel to litigate any alleged copyright violations on your behalf? Litigate my behind. Sit down, Mr. Little. Well, I'm done, Mr. Little. Why didn't David take Goliath in the court to get him to stop beating up on the Israelites? Why didn't the Indians take General Custer in the court to get back Little Bighorn? Why didn't the FDR take Tojo in the court to get him to fix them boats in Pearl Harbor? Because they did whatever they had to do the best way they knew how, same as I did. Mr. Little. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Good. Nothing further, Your Honor. Redirect, Counselor. Fry, to the best of your recollection, when did you write The Worm and the Apple? Objection, Your Honor, irrelevant to the charges. Sustained. Was King Death present last summer on three consecutive days while you performed? Objection, irrelevant. Sustained. King Death earned several million dollars from his recording of your record. And would you mind telling the court, please, where you've been living for the last year? Irrelevant. To you, maybe, not to him. Ms. O'Neill. You ever had to live in a car, Duncan? You ever had to... Ms. O'Neill, I will not allow you to distract the attention of this court. Your Honor, the attention of this court, of the public, has already been distracted. Away from the composer of a song that has brought joy to millions and a fortune to the wrong man. All I'm asking for is the opportunity to show the court that there were extenuating circumstances which forced my client to carry out these actions under duress. I don't want justice set aside, Your Honor. I want the record set straight. And how, dare I ask, will you accomplish that? With the court's permission. Barbara? Whenever you're ready, Fry. This is a little tune I wrote back in 53. It's called The Worm and the Apple. The worm and the apple sitting in the sun. The worm said, Apple, let's have some fun. The apple said, Worm, you a mite too thin, but drill yourself a hole and ease on in. And they were shaking. With a mighty roar, that worm shook the apple right down to the core. The eel told the clam as they lay in the sea. Mr. Little, thank you very much. I think I get the idea. Thank you, thank you. You're only too kind. And now, Your Honor, The Worm and the Apple, as performed by King Death and the Plague from the most recent album, Flesh Fever. That concludes my demonstration, Your Honor. Recross, Mr. Watts? No, Your Honor. Witness may step down. There's no question that this little demonstration has helped illuminate the moral ambiguities that led to your client's actions. However, let the record show that in no way does this court view what we've just heard as sufficient argument to absolve Mr. Little of the 
very serious crime of kidnapping with intent to extort. This court will adjourn until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, at which time we will hear summations and then, hopefully, a decision. Thank you. I'm sorry. Write a closing argument. Well, can I just finish this? It's really intense. Can you turn it down? Yeah, sure. Hey, Rosie, have you listened to these old blues guys? And live to tell about it. Well, this is Sonny Boy Williamson singing Eyesight to the Blind 20 years before the Who did it. And this is Muddy Waters singing uh, Blow Wind Blow light years before Eric Clapton even thought about it. They get ripped off too? No, no way. I mean, I remembered seeing their names on the writer's credits, but I never made the connection. This stuff is historic. This is where it all began. And everybody's recorded it. I mean, the Stones, the Doors, Bonnie Raitt, George Thorogood. Glad somebody appreciates it. Appreciates it? Are you kidding? Rosie, this is real education. It is? Yeah, it is. Take a look. No one in this courtroom can deny Luther Little has a right to be angry. And no one can deny that he has a right to seek any and all means within the legal system to recover any money he might be owed. But what we can deny, what we must deny, is Luther Little's right to step outside the system, acting as judge, jury, and jailer in a court that exists only in his wounded but misguided mind. We must not only come back with a verdict of guilty, but with a sentence that befits the crime Luther Little so clearly committed. To do anything less would be to contradict every reason why this court exists. Ms. O'Neill. I don't want you to be no slave. I don't want you to work all day. I don't want you to be true. I just want to make love to you. I beg your pardon, Ms. O'Neill. I don't want you to wash my clothes. I don't want you to keep a home. I don't want you because I'm sad and blue. I just want to make love to you. Ms. O'Neill, are you aware of the reason you stand before this bench? I can tell by the way you swish and walk. I can tell by the way you baby talk. And I can know by Ms. the O'Neill, way you... Ms. O'Neill, you are about to be cited for contempt of this court. And that's up to you, Your Honor. But I refuse to be cited for contempt of our city's children. What? That song. I just want to make love to you. Although popularized by the Rolling Stones, was written by Willie Dixon, an old blues singer, not unlike the man who awaits judgment before you today. And there are hundreds of songs just like it, written by dozens of men like Luther Little, the founders, the, the, the fathers of rock and roll. But how many of our community's children will ever know the power of that legacy? Who's going to tell them that, that before Elvis sang, that's all right, Mama, big boy Crudup had to write it? Before Cream did, I'm so glad, Skip James had to write it. Before Mick Jagger and Keith Richard ever named their band, they had to hear Muddy Waters sing Rolling Stone. Please get to the point. The point is, Your Honor, that when you sentence Luther Little to, to, to wallow uselessly in a cell, you lock away a teacher. A man who could go from school to school, from child to child, spreading the knowledge that their, their simplest idea could go on to touch millions of souls. And certainly turn profits far greater than any made by the gangs and drug lords who vie for the stranglehold on their futures. Luther Little is a teacher who can remind them that before Chuck Berry and B.B. King were rich and famous, 
But they too were young and very poor. Your Honor, there's no doubt that Luther Little committed a crime. But the greater crime would be ours if we missed the opportunity to let him use his special talents to help our children reclaim an important musical heritage and all the promise that it holds. Thank you. Will the defendant please rise? I have found this trial to be extremely enlightening. Nevertheless, the defendant committed a very serious crime. And I would be derelict in my duties as a judge if I did not find Luther Little, alias Fish Fry Baby, guilty of simple kidnap. Ms. O'Neill, does your client waive time and formal arraignment for judgment and sentence? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. I sentenced Luther Little to serve a term of not less than five years on probation in the service of the Los Angeles County School District, using his special musical talents and knowledge to educate and inspire the students in a manner to be determined by an administrator appointed by the school board and approved by this court. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> All right. Furthermore, furthermore, in an effort to prevent Mr. Little from ever again going outside the law to seek financial remuneration for his song, The Worm and the Apple, this court strongly suggests that counsel for the defense assist Mr. Little in securing a legal representative who's well-versed in matters pertaining to copyright law. Yes, Your Honor. You're free to go, Mr. Little. Leave your phone number and address with the clerk. You got it, Your Honor, and you drop by any time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, no, I'm not going to make a pecan pie. Because, because it's not good for you, Mom. Cholesterol. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, you just take care of the turkey. Leave the dessert to me, all right? Yeah. All right. All right, I love you. Bye. Hey, congratulations. Thanks. Ben told me the news. Yeah. Thank you. This little girl is one hell of a fine boy. Professor, great news. Thank you, Ben. All right, now here Fry is an attorney who I think can help you with your copyright problems, and I promise he'll do it pro bono. All right. Patrick Ginty. Rosie. He owes me one. Oops, I gotta get to the airport or I'll be having Thanksgiving dinner with my cat. Thanks, Barbara, for everything. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm out of here, too. I gotta get to the market before it closes. Fry, it's been an honor. You, too. Bye, Bye, man. Man. Yeah, you, too. Thank so, you. Rosie, you having dinner with the family tomorrow? Actually, no, I'm gonna rent a bunch of old films and catch up on my sleep. Your sleep? Why don't you come over to my house? Harriet and the kids would love to have Oh, no, thanks. And really, I'm looking forward to a quiet day. Okay. Fry, what about you? Make my son's day? That's uh, mighty kind of you, Ben, but I got other plans. Okay, well, you come by and visit any time and bring your guitar. You've got it, Ben. If you change your mind, you'll call? I will. Okay, have a nice holiday. Happy Thanksgiving, Bye. Ben. Rosie, why don't you spend Thanksgiving with old fish fry baby? Like this hall. Thanksgiving, I've had I could years. Yeah, well, thanks to you. Best Thanksgiving they've had in years, too. Day.